NASA's Artemis 1 Orion capsule splashed down in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Mexico. It returned from a 25-day test flight around the moon. The vehicle hit Earth's atmosphere at a mind-bending 40,000 kilometers an hour. And though this one was uncrewed, NASA is aiming for missions with astronauts as soon as 2025. America's new ticket to ride to the moon and back parachuting into the Pacific Orion NASA's capsule Orion makes its splashdown of NASA's journey to the moon comes to a close Orion back on earth three weeks ago Orion was blasted off to the moon carrying mannequins as part of a test run called Artemis one the data that's retrieved from Orion will help unlock the new era of space exploration. And I don't think any one of us could have imagined the mission this successful, but we had a very successful flight test. We now have a foundational deep space transportation system. And while we haven't looked at all the data that we've acquired, we will do that over the coming days and weeks. A U.S. military helicopter and a group of boats approached a capsule after its splashdown. After it's been inspected, it will be transported to San Diego, California. NASA is planning to follow up with Artemis II in 2024, a historic mission that will take humans back to the moon for the first time in half a century. Ultimately, NASA says its plan is to establish a permanent base on the moon and from there, launch missions to Mars. The plan is to get ready to go with humans to Mars late in the decade of the 2030s and then even further beyond. And we know from what we are finding from the James Webb Space Telescope that it is a very, very large universe out there. 50 years after the iconic Apollo 17 mission, NASA is one step closer to setting up camp on the moon. Let's get more on this cosmic story from astrobiologist Keith Cowing. He's joining me now. Very nice to see you, Keith, on such an interesting day. What was NASA yes. looking at specifically in this final re-entry phase of the capsule? Well, you know, having worked there, there's two times during a mission that you get nervous, shall we say. One is the launch, and the other is if you're bringing something back when it comes back into the atmosphere. And so oh, there was some nail fun. biting, and uh, they did it. They did it exactly as they planned to do it. They came closer to their target than they needed to. So all around, it was just a perfect day. Not bad math there. And speaking of math, we have been here before. The, U the U.S. has sent astronauts to the moon before, well, long before computers and the kind of technology we deal with today. What is so challenging, given all this technology, all the advancements we've made in the, in the decades since, what's so challenging about going back to the moon? Well, you know, I remember those landings when I was in high school. So there's half a century between that me and this me. And if you look at what has happened in just terms of what we can do in this world now, you may have things that look similar. It's like, you know, the old Volkswagens had that shape and the new ones do. This capsule looks like the old ones, but it can do many things that you could not do with the Apollo capsules. So that's the most important thing. The second thing is the way we're going back to the moon this time, we're not racing the Soviet Union. We're going back in a planned fashion that will go back again and again and again. And not just America. We, I keep getting asked about NASA's mission. Yeah, it had NASA's logo on it, but it had a European service module, it has all kinds of experiments from all over the world on it. And when we do go back to the moon, there's going to be Americans and Europeans and Japanese and Canadians and whatnot all walking on the moon. So the, the challenges and the differences are not just engineering, but also societal, how and why we're doing this. Yeah, let's get into that. How and why are we doing this? Here on Earth, we have a climate crisis. We have war in Ukraine. We've got inflation. We've got economic issues. There's so much that governments, not just the U.S. government, governments around the world, have to be yep. doing to take care of their populations. Why does this matter for ordinary people beyond just the inspiration aspect? 
Well, again, I can just go back in time to the 60s and they said, you know, a different version of the same thing. You know, why are we doing this when fill in the blank? And I, I would just fast forward a bit. And I mean, we're all excited here in the U.S. that this is happening and in Canada and Europe and so forth. But I would just throw the question back at you. Why are why is India spending billions of dollars to put a person in space? Why is China doing this? Why, uh, with the new Artemis Accords, which brings in several dozen nations in, why do you see sat uh, little countries like Ghana and Nepal flying satellites off the space station? It's because of the technological advantage it does give you. It is inspirational, and that is important. But also, it's now something where space is now something that virtually any country and almost any high school anywhere in the world can do. So I think this is a natural thing that now we could say, all right, well, what are we going to do? Let's go back to the moon. We didn't finish what we need to do there. Let's go back. All right. Let's go back. Indeed, astrobiologist Keith Cohen going where he's gone before, which is DW. It's good to see you again. My pleasure.